jail. Go to war and go to jail. Got a letter in the mail. Got a letter in the mail. In the early morning rain. In the early morning rain. Ask me what I want to be. Ask me what I want to be. Said I want to do PT. Said I want to do PT. All right. Good morning, YouTube. Uh, this is Lieutenant Lindsay, and making a new series here uh, on the operation orders. All right, so operation order is something that you use at Marine OCS for uh, SUI one, SUI two, LRC one, LRC two, um, and you'll use it in the Fleet Marines to give orders. So today we're going to go over the first paragraph of the operation order, and it is orientation. All right, so orientation. Okay. Orientation. The orientation paragraph starts off the order with a brief description of the terrain you will be operating in. Understanding the impact of terrain that it has on the movement and mission will help you come up with a feasible solution. Orientation. Prior to issuing an order, the unit leader orients his or her subordinates to the planned area of operation. Key aspects of the terrain, obstacles along the route, where we are currently located, and where we are going are all things to consider. When orienting your subordinates, keep the orientation simple and brief. The orientation should include present location, direction of attack, location of the objective, and terrain and weather. All right, so your present location is where you are presently located. And I always ask my candidates, why do I need to know where I am right now? The answer, because if I get lost, I at least knew where I was, and I can always get back to that location that I was um, originally at if I know where it is, okay? So it's important that your team, they know where they first started, okay? Because they may not know. You may have gotten to a new objective, and they have no idea what the new grid is, um, and so you're going to tell them that present location, all right? So uh, on this, I put that there's an eight-digit grid. I actually copied this order over from uh, some other uh, documents that we had. And the present location should be an eight-digit grid as well. Okay, so there should be an eight-digit grid um, number given. All right, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and you should always repeat it twice. All right, present location is an eight-digit grid, and it's repeated twice. All right, then we go to direction of attack. All right, this can either be a cardinal direction such as north, south, west, east, northwest, whatever it be. Or it could be an azimuth, okay, 180 degrees. Either one of these is fine. If you are given a cardinal direction, you should use the cardinal direction. But 99% of the time, you're going to be given a compass azimuth, a degree on the compass that you're supposed to follow, okay? So um, you'll say that one once, and then you'll go on to location of the objective, all right, or objective location. It is also an eight-digit grid, and it also must be repeated twice, all right? Do not uh, just repeat it once. It is a, a any grid number should be repeated twice so that people who are copying it can copy it down and make sure they get the right numbers. Like I said, if they don't know where they're going or where they started and they get lost, there's no way for them to either get to the objective or to backtrack and get back to where they first started, where they know they're safe. All right. Um, the last one that I added in here is terrain and weather. This is not necessarily uh, on most op order tests, and it is not necessarily uh, taught by a lot of uh, OSOs. I, I saw a lot of people who didn't necessarily add terrain and weather to their operation order in the orientation section, but um, it is an important uh, feature of the orientation paragraph. All right, so uh, like I said at the beginning, you want your team to know what kind of terrain they're traversing. Okay, um, and a good example life lesson that I learned at OCS. Um, we were doing a fix. We were doing uh, Suli 2 fix, and um, we were told that the train was going to be slightly hilly, all right? Slightly hilly, trees, etc., uh, which is normal in Quantico. Well, at one point during this fix, we got lost, and we ran smack into a cliff. I mean, like, it was a sheer vertical cliff. There was nowhere else to go, um, and we climbed this thing, and then when we got to the top and we went a little ways, uh, the lieutenant who was evaluating us goes, oh, we're lost. Um, and he came, so we had to climb back down. Um, and then he got down to uh, a roadway. And he was able to find a key terrain feature. 
All right, and if he hadn't known that terrain feature, we would have been lost. We had no idea where we were um, in the training area because this training area is huge. And so um, he had been briefed on his terrain and his weather, right? Somebody told him what the terrain was like. Somebody told him uh, what he would expect on his uh, effects and told him where to go if he got lost. So he was able to get us back because he knew those things. If he hadn't known those things, we would have been lost. So the same thing with your team. Like, hey, if there's a sheer vertical cliff that we're going to have to climb, we probably should know about that so that we can be prepared to climb it, whether that's bringing the equipment we need or whether that is, um, you know, just being prepared mentally to attack that kind of terrain. Uh, we need to know. Adversely, we also need to know the weather. Is it going to be foggy? Is it going to rain? Is it going to snow? Uh, so that we bring the right equipment or that we're prepared to run into fog and we know that when that comes, we can change up our formations to match that weather. So we have to be prepared for those things. And those are all things that you need to brief in the orientation. All right, so uh, with that, if there are any questions, please comment below. Um, if you have suggestions for this video series, please, uh, I'd also take those, just put them in the comments. Um, and I'll be putting out one video for each section of the five paragraph order, or in this case, six videos, um, to cover each section. And they should all be about 10 minutes long. So keep uh, liking and subscribing for more videos, and uh, that way you see all the video series, and you can kind of pick and choose which ones you want to focus on.